Aha, there you are. A very good evening to you and a very, very happy new year 2017. This is Scotty McClue broadcasting live to you on Facebook Live on Sunday, the 1st of January 2017. We were with you to see in the bells last night for Hogmanay. And of course, here we are back for an hour of superb, scintillating information, education and entertainment, conversation, chit chat and banter with your good selves, the people of the world. Now, as you can see, I'm quite well turned out tonight because there was a chap called Gavin McCoy who was upset that he didn't get to a black tie do for Hogmanay to see in the new year. So Gavin, if you're watching right now, a very warm welcome to our black tie do with me, Scotty McClure. So here we go. Now, <clears throat> there's Julianne saying, hello, Scotty. Dinky do, Scotty, says Andy McCrory. And Logan Rowe says, a happy new year. Now, a happy new year to you guys. Now, keep your um, calls coming in, of course. We're going to have Skype tonight. So if you want to Skype in, do so. Remember to swear not to swear. So very, very best behavior because we are guests in people's house. We had uh, an idiot once thought that he would ruin it for millions and millions of people by not watching his language, forgetting, of course, that we're guests in people's houses. So a very, very happy new year to all of you. It's love you, lovely, love you, love you. Yes, I do, but lovely to have you with me for new year. And uh, I say dinky do. This is our 15th program. It's our Scotty McClure special, a New Year special, of course. So I hope we'll have lots of greetings from you and lots of chit chat. Good evening, sir, says Malcolm. Is it? Oh, it's Scotty, says George Mullen. Now, tonight, if you want a subject for discussion, people are calling for the abolition of the monarchy. I have never heard so much nonsense in my life. Why on earth would we want to abolish one of the only decent things left in this country. I saw the Prime Minister making a speech and I thought to myself, I'm very sorry, but I don't agree with a lot of that. So there you are. And um, I have got a different opinion on that. I've got a black tie too on Wednesday at Daldowie, says George. I'm sorry to hear that, George. Scotty, have a most fantastic New Year, says Tony Mac. My great radio friend, my New Year resolution is never to give up on my great love of radio. What do you think? I think perhaps you know I agree with you, Johnny Mac. You never, ever, ever give up on what you want to do in life. I mean, I've had one or two years in the wilderness radio-wise because people are going, ah, the world's changed. Now, it hasn't, of course, but that's an excuse. The other thing is to give you the date and say, oh, come on, <laughs> this is 2017. As if we didn't know that. What does that actually mean? Amazing. Bloodwin no, did de da, Scotty. Happy New Year. Yes, yes, no star, yaki da. I say to you, Julianne from Wales, I'm working on my Welsh accent, Julianne, so I'll be able to speak to you in a Welsh voice, if that's the thing. Is it any good? Do you like it? I ask you. Um, so there we are. Now, Happy New Year, Scotty, says Joanne Menzies or Mingus. What is it, Joanne? How do I pronounce your wonderful second name? A great Scottish name, of course, but is it Menzies or is it Mingus? So there we are. Dinner the dog. Happy New Year, Scotty. Happy New Year, bud says Andy Grant. So if you'd like to discuss, I mean, subject for discussion, because we had a guy on earlier, he said he was bored last night, bored, because it was just me, um, you know, shouting out the names that were coming up in front of me. Mm -hmm. That's right, yes. And as I said to him, that's like asking Sir Andy Murray, is, 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 all you do is play tennis, you know what I mean? Not saying to a choir, all you lot seem to do is sing. I find it boring, that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? That's the kind of nonsense we get. People trying to stamp a lot of nonsense onto the programme. Yes, Max Boyce, lol, says Julianne Scott down in uh, in Wales there. I think that's fast. I must come down to Mether and uh, I'll see what's going on in Wales. I think the monarchy should be abolished. It's outdated. And what's outdated about it, Joe Fraser Balls? What is outdated about it? Not outdated at all. Maybe if there were other Euro Royals and what instead of living on taxpayers' money. No, the Royals, we don't they don't live on taxpayers' money. They cost us all fifty two pence a year. And they bring in billions to the coffers of the United Kingdom. I can tell you that right now. There's the lovely Francis Basile. I would like to ask you 
uh, your best time as Scott FM. And you can what FM means, of course I do. Love you, darling. Love you, Francis, my darling. One of the finest lovable lasses of the big switchboard Scotty McClue ever had. Last year we lost David Barry, Leonard Cohen, George Michael, but never fear, steps are getting back together and that will make up for it, Scotty, says George. Absolutely. Do you know the Doug? If the Queen's not fit for work, she should have her money stopped. Do you know the Doug? You don't have to talk a lot of nonsense. The Queen is 90. I will see if you're working at 90, do you know the Doug? And if you're not working at 90, do you know the Doug? You'll get your money stopped. There we go. Good day from Australia, Scotty. Uh, the topic of an Australian Republic has raised its head again. If current Prime Minister Turnbull had his way, he'd make it happen. No, no. Listen, that's just a blip for Oz. Oh, you love the Queen out there, and we know that. So there you are. Uh, parasite, says Albert McSquared. Albert, I think you're being harsh on yourself there. I don't think you're a parasite, but if that's, if the cap fits... How do they bring in billions, Scotty, says Joe Fraser Walls? Well, Joe Fraser Walls, what happens is they go abroad on business. And very shortly after that, big business deals are signed, which provide the economy, which pays for the health service and all that sort of stuff, and gives us a slightly easier time tax-wise. Now, we've obviously been con recently with the Conservatives' um, austerity thing. That's a political thing, and that was to screw us all for money to get the money back for the banks. But the money's back for the banks now, so, you know, we don't need any austerity. Uh, have you had a good New Year, my bud, says Francis Basili. Francis Darling. I've had the most fantastic New Year. Lovely. We were here. We saw in the bells together with the rest of the world. And you can see it, folks. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook Live. Get a good look at last night's video. You'll see as we saw in the bells. And it was absolutely tremendous. Australia's full of criminals, says George. I don't think so, George, any more than any other country, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I remember uh, somebody trying to get into Australia and the chap said, what about your criminal record? He said, I thought you didn't need one nowadays. Uh, spent at least three hours a day watching YouTube clips of you, says Evan Thompson. Classic radio, Scotty. Mr. Martin was brilliant. Yes, he is brilliant. If you want to listen to a conversation, Scotty McClure on YouTube talks to Mr. Martin 1 and talks to Mr. Martin 2. People think he's called Martin D because it's day one and day two. Have you got a cravat on? No, no, no. I've got my bow tie on. Can you not see me, for goodness sake? Uh, so there we are, Francis. My bow tie. I'm dressed up. It's a black tie event. And do you like the waistcoat? I thought you'd quite like that. And I'll tell you what else I've got. Uh, I shall just turn around and say, this is just a wee smartener for the program now. Uh, I haven't put water in it because there's not really a lot of room in the glass, as you can see. But there we are. Just a wee, a wee smartener, um, you know. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy 2017. Mm. So there you are. Uh, we're talking tonight about the royal family. Some people are calling for the abolition of the royal family, and I'm saying this is absolute nonsense. This is just a lack of understanding. If you want to Skype in, do feel free to do so. My Skype is Scotty dot. McClue, but just proper calls, please. No nonsense. So there you are. Uh, your queen, a waste of time, says Albert McSquare. No, she's not my queen. She's our queen. She's not a waste of time at all. She has brought quality to this country for many, many years, 90 years, in fact. She's still working. They work very, very hard. A lot of the so-called money that you see, that goes to run our palaces. So there you are. A shout out to Maggie from Basford in Nottingham, says Steve Burroughs. Absolutely no problem at all. Um, are you drinking on the job, Scotty, says Dino the Doug? Well, you don't know what it is, Dino, do you? Jim Murdoch, love your hat, Scotty. A happy new year and cheers. It is a shout-out programme. This is what it is. It makes me laugh when people try to... Um, well, it doesn't make me laugh. It's tragic, actually. When people try to have something different to what they've got. Remember, if you can't have what you like, try to like what you have. And remember that nobody can ever humiliate you without your permission. Okay, we got that. There's a couple of biggies for you. Uh, so, she's no mind your rags, says Albert Squared. Yes, Albert Squared, she is your queen, and you can love her and bow down to her, Albert Squared, and your life will improve dramatically. They don't just need abolished, says John Toms, they need removed. 
Queen applies for funding to adapt the palace. The same money was intended to go to the poor. The Queen is a disgrace. Nonsense, John Toms. You're talking out of your chocolate money. What I would say to you there is that the funding goes on a public building. And all these public buildings are national assets. They are the family silver. Now, if you sold these palaces off, if you abolish the monarchy, the money would disappear, right? People would buy them, they'd go to maybe Russian oligarchs or something like that, and that would be the end of it. But the poor would still be there. So there you go. It comes out of a different budget. Uh, money to pay for royal palaces when millions of people are having to use food banks, says Tony Kay. I can see where you're coming from, Tony, but there's no connection at all. It comes out of a, a different budget. There are trillions and trillions and trillions of pounds allowed to go offshore from this country. Bring all that back on shore and you'll see a big, big difference. Or go for an independent Scotland. Take Scotland out of all that, but don't touch the monarchy. This is the mistake the nationalists have made on so many occasions. They've tried to interfere with the crown and, of course, end of story. The game's up. You'll never, ever, ever see an independent Scotland if you don't just leave the crown alone, okay? So don't mess with the crown. Remember, the Americans say you can't fight City Hall. The crown will always win, and it's only by dint of the crown that you could actually have an independent Scotland. So there you are. Nice waistcoat, Scotty. Don't you think the Glasgow cabbies are the best in the world? Of course they are. They just need to make sure they clean their injectors out. Look what they done to our Scottish Queen, remember, says Michael McQueen. Well, our Queen is our Scottish Queen, Michael McQueen, uh, to be quite honest with you, because uh, the line is Scottish. James the Sixth of Scotland became James the First of England, Jamie Stewart. And that's where the line comes from. Uh, hi, Scotty. Tried to send this message before. Happy New Year. My New Year's resolution is to not give up on radio. What do you think? We got it, Tony, and we read it out, so you're maybe not paying attention there, lad. I know about the buildings. I've been in some of them, says John Toms. They're largely unused. Well, 463 rooms. You can't really use 463 rooms all the time, John. The Queen applied from funding for the budget intended for the poor. Well, we've read that out. Uh, a great show last night, Scotty, as usual, says Steve Burrows. Although I say it myself, I think it was a fantastic Hogmanay, and the television was so poor. If I was running uh, part of the uh, television setup for Hogmanay and New Year, I would be ashamed. I would actually have handed my notice in this morning because the effort that seemed to be put in was shocking. It really was shocking. We want a traditional New Year. That's why we have Scotty McClure's Hogman A Bash. We want a traditional New Year with Scottish music, Scottish dancing, Scottish poetry, chit chat, laughter, comedy. All these fantastic things. You know, do you not remember we used to watch Scotch and Rye? And then you would have other things. The McFlannels, who can go back to the McFlannels? They took them off because they were so successful. If something's very, very successful, in Scotland, they tend to take it off. Uh, so there you are. Scotty, am I right in thinking Bonnie Prince Charlie was French? Well, he spoke a lot of French, of course. He's buried in the Vatican. And um, I think, I, don't quote me on this, but I think uh, the Queen Mother, the Queen's Mother, actually uh, paid for the restoration of Bonnie Prince Charlie's tomb in the Vatican. So there you are, King Carlos, Carlos Rex, and you'll see him there. And I'm sure that the Scottish regiments to this day, after they've toasted the Queen, also have a toast in Gaelic to the King over the water. But uh, you can tell me about that. TV's been awful this past weekend, says Laura. Uh, so there you are. So was Bonnie Prince Charlie French? He had a lot of French connections, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, but I don't you think you would actually say he was French himself. But what's very, very interesting, I knew an old gentleman very well who wrote to an old gentleman whose either grandfather or great-grandfather remembered Bonnie Prince Charlie walking about Rome. And I think he died in 1764. This is obviously just off the top of my head. But I think he died in 1764. So that means that I knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew Bonnie Prince Charlie. Woo! I love it. Uh, Scotty, are you live? Yes, Jarvis, we are live. Need a massive favour. Can you shout out to the Pickerings? 
Uh, and the Toms and say a happy new year, says John. Of course I can, old chum. I can always wish them a happy new year. Can you speak French, Scotty? Non, je ne crois pas, je ne parle pas français. Très vite, si tu parles de mon, but that you should wrong way. Uh, I've got about the royal family. A friend of mine asked, with all the money that the taxpayer gives the royal family, how much money does Scotland and the UK get back? I would like to know. See more, he says here. I'll see if I can prod that and see more. Um, I would like to know the answer. Well, to put you in the picture there, we pay 52 pence for the royal family and we get back absolute fortunes of which Scotland benefits as well because Scotland has many, many, many visits from members of the royal family as well. So it's a very, very good system. And they are A-listers. Let's have it straight. They're massive, massive celebs, the royal family, as well as being the royal family. And uh, Laurie Lever, how often do you do this, Scotty? Laurie, I do this. It's wonderful to hear from you, by the way. I'm a huge fan of yours. I do this every Sunday night for one hour, 10 o'clock sharp, 2200 hours Greenwich Mean Time in the summer British summertime. We're on programme number 15, and last night we saw in the bells. You'll get all the programmes on YouTube. You'll get them on Facebook as well, so you can catch up there, Laurie. And if you could do me a favour and tell everyone about this programme. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. What time are we at, guys? We need a share. The Skype's open. If anybody wants to phone, you're very, very welcome. There we are. Just check the time. Whoa, time for a share. We're a minute late. Share, 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 share. Get sharing, guys. Share your video. Tell everybody on your social media so that we're building a big, 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 big audience all the time. A happy new year to Amy and Rebecca, please. I'm off to bed now, says John Toms. John, you have a dinky do night and sleep like a baby, my boy. You're a great man. So there you are. Uh, although I do have to inform you about the royal family. The Queen should retire, says Peter McQueer, and bring in King Billy. I think you'll find King Billy is dead. And Stinking Billy, the Duke of Cumberland, who clobbered everybody at Culloden, he's well gone as well. So there you are. Incredible. Need to dash. Good night. Catch up soon, says John Toms. Dinky do, John. Take great care of yourself. And a very happy 2017 to you and your lovely family. Excellent stuff. Laurie, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, says Andy Grant. Will do, love, says Laurie Lever. What a fantastic guy. He is a great guy. Um, Jarvis says he was huge, by the way. Scotty, you look as if you've had a good Christmas. I always have a good Christmas. Jarvis, you should know that. Uh, you should do this show more than once a week, Scotty, says Steve Burrows. Well, we shall see. There are very, very big plans for Scotty McClure. For 2017 so i think you'll be hearing a lot more from me uh, one or two of the radio and television companies have tried to <coughs> politely look away and think yes it's not the kind of thing we would be doing and i always remember things like dad's army and saying even the bbc were beginning to realize they had a hit on their hands and i've always felt the same thing with scotty McClure. if you can eventually convince these people and say look what is your problem? What is it that worries you about proper upfront entertainment, about personality broadcasters, about talking to the nation, about bringing the public on board and on site? What is your problem with that? Mm, well, you see, we need to speak to the committee about that. Why do you need to speak to committee? A camel is a horse designed by committee. I say, right, there we are. Um, who have we got? Yes, we should do it more than once a week. However, Steve, there's talk that we might do five programmes a week and just build it up throughout the world. Scotty, what do you think of the Glasgow Christmas lights? They get poorer by the year, not like the 60s and 70s. I think the 60s and 70s were times of great freedom for people. There were times of great socialism with a small s, when governments genuinely cared about people. Unfortunately, Margaret Thatcher, who we thought was great at the time, but she became, you know, she was supposed to be an ordinary person and she became more la -de -da, um as the days went on and she caused a lot of, a lot of damage to this country. Harold Wilson talked about the white heat of technology. 
that was him, wasn't it? And uh, old uh, old Harold Macmillan was the wind of change blowing through Africa when uh, everything got its independence. Kenya got its independence. Malcolm MacDonald, Ramsay MacDonald's son, Ramsay MacDonald from Lossy Mouth, a great man actually, Ramsay MacDonald, but uh, rather sad at the end. I think it was James Maxton, Jimmy Maxton said, sit down, man, you're a tragedy. Uh, with the cost of restoring Buckingham Palace, is it not fair to ask the Royal Family to contribute some of their own money. Tony, it doesn't quite work that way. Buckingham Palace belongs to the people. It's a massive asset in SW1. If you sold Buckingham Palace, it would just get taken over by somebody with some serious loot. Buckingham Palace was bought, if I remember rightly, for five million quid in today's money. So it was bought very, very, very cheaply at the time so there you go the dog woke up when you mentioned my name darling says Laurie lever how fantastic are you a tory says jarvis butler no i'm not anything jarvis i am apolitical if you like but i do firmly know not just believe but know that scotland could function perfectly well on its own economically so there you are Hello again, Scotty, all the way from Maine in the USA. Yes, you're in Maine. Fantastic. Happy New Year. Joanna K. Jackson. Joanna K. I was trying to remember exactly where you were last night, and now you've told me. Um, are you looking for a knighthood? Uh, OBE, keep kissing the Germans. No, no, Albert McSquared. If I was looking for a knighthood, I would have one. John Reith, who started the BBC, was knighted at the age of 37. Right, and then he also became a GCVO, that's uh, the Victorian Order, a general commander of the Victorian Order. He uh, was a GBE, I think, as well. He was a member of the Privy Council, he had a couple of doctorates, he was the Rector of Glasgow University, he was the Lord High Commissioner of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. He did all these things, but the poor soul wasn't actually happy. So there you go. Um, you held your wished. There, says Jarvis. Don't be silly. You seem to have a big SNP following Scotty, says Evan Thompson. Well, that's because I believe that Scotland could do very, very well independently. We gave £40 billion to Westminster for squandering, and then we're getting a cheek from a Tory government telling us how to run our affairs. Now, the Scots have run the empire. The Scots used to do everything, and the reason the Scots are so successful when they get going and when the money pours into Scotland is because they don't partake in the class system. So you, me, we're all the same. We're all Jock Thompson's bairns. So there you go. Uh, you seem to have a big SMP for that's That's dealt with that. Should we deport Her Majesty to Greenock? Says Dean of the Doug. Now, Greenock, I could see as the Hong Kong of Scotland. I think Greenock would make a fantastic world financial centre. You've got the river there, you've got a playground for people, you've got beautiful houses throughout Greenock. And Greenock's depopulated. I mean, I know Greenock very, very well. That's where I originated. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's depopulated. There were about 75,000 people living in Greenock. I think there's about 50,000 now, if I'm right. So we need to get back and make Greenock a financial centre. That's what I would say. Keep up the good work, Scotty. I'll share your show. I'm off to get some brekkie and head to the beach. Have a good rest of the show, says Ali Haining, out in Australia there. Isn't it gorgeous to be part of a global show? Rest assured, folks, this is the future of the media. This is the way ahead. Facebook Live. At the moment, it's used just for people, just for a wee chat with our family and what have you. But I can see this program being very, very, very big worldwide. You've got to help in that. And I don't want any huffy poos, okay? So share, share, share. And tell everyone, if you see anything by Scotty McLeod, tell the world about it. Tell everyone. Share it, share it, share it. Send it round all of social media. If you're part of other sites, if you're part of Twitter or Google Plus or LinkedIn, or whatever, um, you know, Reddit, all that kind of stuff. Take Scotty's videos from YouTube, put them on Reddit, and uh, put them on all social media, and let's get moving here. It's all very well me sitting here chit-chatting night after night, but you need to get moving and do your stuff and build a proper talk show, because the world deserves it. Greenock is the Australia of the 2000s. 
says George Mullins. A beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Um, I miss playing the mighty McClue organ on the radio. Swell to great, says Paul Francis Carroll. Fantastic. Dance with your granny matey. Paul Francis Carroll, one of the world's great organists. And I know you've played at all the great universities at Cambridge and what have you in Oxford. And I have got for you tonight, right? I just happen to have one here. It's a bit, it's a bit like Blue Peter this. And um, I have got an organ beside me. What about that, Paul Francis Carroll? So there you are. So we can turn round and play the pipe organ. Hi, Scotty. Give a big shout out to my childhood place of the Gorbals in Glasgow, my most favourite place, says Tony Mack. I love the Gorbals, Tony. I remember visiting Adelphi Street uh, School with a show. Uh, Wadge says, finally, 2017 Wadge. It is indeed. Anna Lil Johansson Lever. I love your dialect, man. Well, fantastic, Anna Lil Johansson Lever. I love your dialect too, honey. So you come on and give us a bit of that. You've always been one step ahead.